This is Heart Rhythm TV. I'm Roderick Tung. With me, I have the Andrea Natale, a pioneer in AFib ablation, to give us a breaking commentary on this Converge trial that was released this morning. Andrea, welcome and thanks for joining us. Thank you, Rod. Happy to be here. This is, this is awesome to have your input because you've been practicing and preaching posterior wall for 20 years. For our audience, the Converge trial just came out with the Epi and Endo approach to silencing the posterior wall versus an endocardial WACA alone. And they showed there's an 18% difference in freedom from atrial arrhythmias um, beyond a year. So Andrea, what do you think about this mechanistically and pragmatically? Well, you know, as you said, uh, my group has been sort of advocating for posterior wall for a long, long time. And, and one reason is that embryologically, the posterior wall is an extension of the pulmonary vein. So why the pulmonary vein tube only uh, should be arrhythmogenic. So that's uh, certainly one important reason. So I'm, I, I, I'm glad that this is, a, uh, you know, it's another piece of the puzzle that support uh, uh, that approach. Uh, obviously, you know, especially in the persistent uh, and, the, and even more so in the long-standing persistent, I don't want people uh, to, to think that OCO wall is the magic spot because there are others, but, uh, you know, certainly this study uh, show that uh, if you have a, a good strategy that uh, is able to isolate the posterior wall, there is a benefit. Uh, there is some sort of design uh, trial issue. And one of them you mentioned that the ablation group only had a WACA, so the posterior wall was not ablated. Uh, but, but, you know, that kind of helped to make the point that if you do that, uh, then you end up with the superior outcome. Does that mean that we should or uh, should stop using catheter ablation and convert to a conversion procedure. Well, I, th I think that's a matter of uh, skill. If you are uncomfortable in doing a posterior wall, then yes, I mean, that's an option and it seems to work. But if you are comfortable in doing a posterior wall with catheter, which can be done, obviously, you know, as a, our group, and I think you were all too, and, and many other have done for a while, um, then you know you just it, it, this just provide another sort of uh, information to support that that's actually a relevant a relevant strategy. And I and I think the posterior wall uh, you've been again touting that we need to do the posterior wall and then you know it's almost like fashion everything that's old becomes new again and everything's coming back in. But the question is how to do the posterior wall and you've always advocated more of the extensive. Yeah. modification. The analogy I like to give is that if you've got a secured parking lot, do you not lock your car? You know, you still got to deal with the stuff inside because with a box lesion, one gap and everything's alive. So you've always advocated this wider. And I think a lot of people yes. are moving towards that. You know, the question is, is a lot of the, the Twitter storm about the poster wall arguments is that sometimes with the Korea and a lot of these other studies that came out, they're doing box isolation. Yes. So you feel pretty strongly that we shouldn't be even evaluating box isolation anymore if we're going to do future studies, Andrea? Yeah, no, I, you know, I, I think it would be nice to have a, a, a catheter-based uh, study proving that. The problem is that you mentioned is that the, the issue is how do we achieve permanent posterior wall isolation? Um, and I, I think you know, the reason why you use the sort of peppering approach is because by doing that line and circle, we realized uh, uh, many years ago that that kind of is a setup for recurrence. Uh, and so the best strategy is to do uh, more, but at the end, you kind of paid off in terms of long-term long uh, uh, effect. In fact, uh, as I mentioned, you know, we, we see reconnection with that strategy in probably less than 10% of the patient when they can for do. Whereas if you do the circle or the box, it's almost like 60, 70%. So you, you really, reduce the, the benefit of the strategy because I, and actually when you have reconnection, you can actually have the opposite, you become kind of arrhythmogenic. So this is the issue. I think uh, uh, one way, we have a study actually that launched recently uh, that Dr. Romero uh, with me at the PI, uh, where we give operator two procedure before you measure uh, outcome. So that could be one solution or we might wait for pulse field ablation, which seems to have certainly around the vein uh, better um, outcome with a single procedure. And then that might be, might be the right time to look at this issue um, 
uh, in the right way. Because the problem right now is that, uh, especially for those people that still has not, have not evolved to high power, if you do the posterior wall with a roof line and a posterior line with low power, you, you're virtually guaranteed to have reconnection. Well, let me push you on a little bit of technologies because obviously a tool, Verma and Vivek, were pushing some of the new pulse field ablation. Your peppering approach is really because of the limitations of RF. Yes. You yes. have really good lattice catheter tip or electroporation. Yes. Would you then do a peppering or then would you go to a box? Uh, you know, I, I think if you, uh, once for 20 years you've done something, you've actually, I've done uh, some of the cases that Vivek uh, presented with the, the pulse field uh, with the lattice. Uh, I was actually, I did some of the cases in Europe uh, and I actually used the lattice to kind of go across uh, the posterior wall. Uh, I did it more to kind of prove that, you know, there was no esophageal temperature increase and stuff mm -hmm. with that approach. But uh, I, I, I think you can, with, a, with an effective strategy, you can do the line if you want. It doesn't matter, you do it the way you want. And actually, the, the nice things that Vivek show is that with the redo, uh, mapping is that you have virtually 100% uh, uh, permanent effect even when you do a mitral line or a roof line, which is you know really unprecedented. Uh, you know with what people have, have been doing so far. Andrea, what do you think about the CTI lines that were done in the converged trial in both arms? What I do you think, think about the addition of that. I think it's a waste of time. We actually did a randomized study many many years ago when I was at the Cleveland Clinic, and uh, every time we look at that. Uh, in study where people, some people did it, some people did not, it didn't make any difference. And if you think about, now we have the data to support it flatter, it's just the manifestation of AFib. So if you treat properly AFib, why a flatter line is gonna increase your success? It makes absolutely no sense. But the, we actually did the randomized study many, many years ago, showing no benefit. So I think the trial you would like to see would be you would like to go up against Converge and go Natali peppering posterior wall versus converge. That could be an option, yeah. Or you know, uh, we can do a waka versus posterior wall once we have the the right tool and the right the right recipe for everybody to actually achieve that end point. Hopefully, with a single procedure. Well, I think what was nice is also there was there were no signals of elevated risks and major adverse events even with an epicardial approach. So yes. it's it's novel, and I think mechanistically. It's yeah. really valuable to say, you've said, if you're going to do it, you make sure it's completely silenced. You can't do a sham posterior wall yes. where sometimes you believe that maybe it's not permanent. So this is really probably the best we could do. I don't know if we need to go all the way and get all the surgeons to be involved with it, but it, mechanistically, it's very valuable. Well, Andrea, thank you for joining us. I really appreciate your right. insights into this, and you can tell everyone kind of, I told you so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure somebody is still not going to believe it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, Andrea. Thank Have you. a good one. Thanks. Okay. Thanks, Rob. Bye. This is all too good.